Hey everyone, Tyler here. Thanks for dropping by. In this video, I want to show you kind of how I built this, this sound kit for kind of run and gun type stuff. And like, first of all, I'm, I'm not a professional sound up. So if you are getting into becoming a professional sound op, don't listen to me because I'll probably, I might steer you in the wrong direction. If sound ops are watching this, they might laugh. But that said, this kit is very functional and has worked really well for me for running sound and this is coming from the perspective of like you one man band operations or even like working as part of a crew where it's kind of an all hands on deck situation and there's you know a production company of four or five people that can all kind of do all the roles and you just kind of hop on and just kind of do whatever that uh, that's pretty common these days so um if you're kind of in that in that camp then this might help you out but um otherwise if you just kind of like nerding out about how kits and stuff are put together then let's nerd out together so uh for the microphone systems i'm using the rode ntg5 typically for my shotgun audio and i'll run that into channel one of the mix pre 32 which is what i'm using right here uh, i am using the ntg5 right now which is why you don't see it on the uh on the table here and then i'll run like a boom pole like a k tech travel boom pole typically because it's uh easier to pack down especially for travel as for lavalier i'm running the deity theo system it's a fantastic system i made a video on that and i will link it above and below and all that stuff so i'm not going to go into too much detail uh, about it in this video but uh long and short of it it's a really great system it's a digital wireless uhf system and so it's it's not living in that really crowded 2.4 gigahertz system like a lot of the like you know the the road wireless go and the dji mics and stuff much more of a professional unit than those and if you are not in the us then you can record 32-bit float and transmit to the receiver at the same time which is really cool if you're in the us unfortunately due to a patent you have to choose one or the other but it is really easy to hop over into record mode if you're using the the Citus audio app it it's so easy in fact recently on a shoot i had talent lapped up and they were connected to the receiver but i knew they were they were getting in a vehicle and i wasn't able to go with them and i knew i was going to lose signal from them pretty quickly so i just opened the app and initiated record just straight from the app and both of these packs were recording and they had time codes synced to them and then i had time codes synced to all of the different cameras and drones and stuff so when you go into post-production super easy to sync all that up so running theos super awesome uh these little bags right here are basically like this is like my time code bought my tc1 bag i've got a couple of tc1 units in here and then just different cables like you know bnc connections and uh ext port for komodo x and all kinds of different cables for different camera systems and whatnot and then this right here is the my my like little theos auxiliary bag and in here i just have this is like an old mag light flashlight case that it shipped in or whatever to put all the antennas and the microphones and stuff in there now moving on to the bag i am running the orca or 270 and i run the uh, sound devices mix pre 32 in here and i basically just leave the mix pre 32 and 32-bit float audio recording mode yep yeah, but i've just got the the orca bag here and the mix pre is just kind of suspended and it's just attached to the little handles with this these little velcro straps so it's a uh, it's easy to get to and, and change settings here navigate to the menu when we're actually rolling i just get these little guys just kind of out of the way that way i can access the dial here to change any gain settings or headphone out volume or anything like that and then i can access the xlr ports speaking of the xlr ports typically the way i like to run it is run shotgun audio into channel one and then the the lab audio into channels two and three cool thing about theos is the theos has one receiver to the two transmitters so i'll run run the output a into channel two and then output b into channel three using the xlr adapters from the theos receiver and then i have the tc1 unit right here and that's just kind of velcroed to the inside of this pocket right here and that's just running into the aux in and then i have the 
makes pre32 just set up to have you know time code external in from the auxiliary input so that's kind of that pack so on this side right here what i have is this little small rig v mount this is just the 50 watt hour v mount and what i use this for is to power the theos receiver as well as the mix pre 32 so the usb c out i just use to run into the usb c connection on the mix pre 32 i don't know if you can tell it's kind of hard to see but it's right in there it's right by the power switch and then on the usb type a out i have the triple usb c running to the other side and that's to power the receiver here and I just used the three USB-C thing that came with the TC1 kit to if like for some reason the TC1 is really low in battery I forgot to charge it or something overnight then I can provide power to that or if I'm going to run a separate Theos receiver if, I, if I'm just going to run labs, then I can power that as well. So I've got a couple extra USB-C power there. And the 50 watt hour V-mount, like that powers it pretty much the entire day. But I also am running batteries inside of the Theos as well as I have the little battery tray for the Mix Pre 32. And that just gives me peace of mind knowing that I'm never going to run out of battery and uh, when the v-mount dies the the internal batteries are going to kick in so i'm never gonna run out of power for my purposes the small rig v-mount has powered everything uh just the way that i need so i see no reason to change anything out with that for right now now before we go any further into the rest of the kit that i have for the sound bag i do want to thank the sponsor of today's video and that is artlist artlist is an all-in-one solution for sound effects music stock footage templates all that kind of good stuff now i've personally been using artlist for years now and i absolutely love the music and sound effects and footage like i, I wouldn't recommend artlist if i didn't think that their their product is good but what really sells like the biggest selling point for me is the licensing terms with artlist you see i use the max everything plan and what that does is that gives me sound effects footage everything that artlist offers it all bundles it into one simple plan and the great thing about it is is i can use all of those assets whether it's the sound effects or the music the footage whatever the case may be i can use all of that in either my youtube work or my client work and that license covers that client work as well so that my client when they post their video to whatever social channel or their website or, or wherever they're posting it, they're not gonna get flagged for any kind of copyright infringement or anything because that license follows them as well and covers them. And the cool thing is, is it doesn't matter how big the scope of the project is or how big or small the company is, the licensing terms covers you worldwide in perpetuity no questions asked and for me that's just one less thing that i have to worry about when i'm working on a client project i don't have to worry about licensing it do i get the right license for this song for this kind of project or this kind of company artlist makes it so simple for you and that's why i always recommend artlist to anybody asking me what they should use for you know licensing music or sound effects or whatever the case may be now there are a number of different plans to choose from depending on your needs you can get the max everything bundle which is what i use and that gives you everything artless has to offer but if you don't need all that stuff maybe you just want music and sound effects then you can get the music and sound effects plan but what i always recommend to people that are looking at the music and sound effects plan you can see that there are two options to choose from there is a pro plan and then a social plan what i always recommend to people is going for the pro plan just in the event just in, the, in in case you are going to do a client project as well you can use that same plan for your client work as well as your youtube or whatever social media platform that you're using so if you are interested in signing up for artlist use the link down in the description below all right moving on let's go ahead and wrap it up and talk about the remaining items here on the desk with this kit and the first thing is this little strap right here this is a uh, the peak design camera strap i can't remember what exactly what it's called what i did is i ended up getting the little tabs and putting them on here it's just this is a more comfortable neck strap than the one that came with the bag itself next up we have monitoring first up is the uh the sony mdr 7506s these are kind of like probably the most common that you see out there they're pretty affordable i think they're like 85 bucks or something like that it's got a really long lead here and then it's got this 
eighth inch to be able to plug in directly into the Mix Pre, but it comes with a little adapter if you are running it like for a, um, a quarter inch. So that's nice. But a lot of times actually, I found myself using in-ear monitors. So these are the Shure 425s. These are awesome because they are super flat response. They sound really good. The reason why I like using these is because a lot of times the crew will be on some kind of headset like a Hollyland Solidcom or something like that. And running the Solidcom with these over the ear monitors is honestly super annoying. It's just super awkward to the point where you kind of have to just have like either the monitors or the, the, the comms device just kind of over your neck. And then you always, you always kind of feel like you're, you don't really know what's going on and you might not hear the director or whatever the case may be. So using in-ear monitors, I've found to kind of solve that problem and I'll just send a mono mix out of the headphone out on the mix pre so i can kind of hear everything that's going on and when the camera's you know when everything's about to roll then i'll just put the other ear in really quickly and then that way i still be able to monitor audio but if you know the director or someone calls over the comms then i can still kind of hear what's going on so um yeah that's that's pretty much it i really like this kit um the you, the you soundies out there are probably have way more elegant solutions than this, but this definitely works for me. So um, yeah, I'll leave links to this stuff in the description. And um, if, if you found this helpful, let me know, because um, if when I was building this out, I wish I had a video to kind of show me how some of this stuff would work and, you know, different combinations of batteries and stuff to work. So um, yeah, hope you found it helpful and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Peace.